Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, sorry a share didn't come through, a video didn't come through for Monday. Um, I apologize about that. So what we're going to do is first go over last week's learning um, and also kind of that's the end of one, the first section of our learning to kind of just summarize what we've done there and then introduce the second section including what you did on Monday and including what you're going to do tonight. Um, so what you did last week was look at the Rambam. Um, the Rambam is different, it was the, the fourth of the Roshonim we looked at after seeing the Gemara, after seeing the first three Roshonim, Rashi, Tosas and Rif. We now look at the Rambam. The Rambam does something different, which in fact we'll see um, as we develop and as we go through. The Rambam is, is one of the most important, and what, similar to what the Rambam did, has in fact been done a lot over the last 100 years. We'll get to that later on. What the Rambam did was take all of the Gomorrahs, all of the Halakhas, etc., which one of the things people find very difficult about learning Gomorrah is the fact that it's very, it kind of, the topic ju jumps around, like, you'll, you'll be learning Shabbos and then a question to do with Bava Kamal will come up, and you'll be learning Bava Metziah and then something to do with Sukkah, and it just, and then Taras and Kochub, it just, there's a lot of different topics. And also, so first of all, you're learning through a topic, like you get through, taken into other areas. Also, let's suppose you wanted to learn everything there is to learn, I don't know, on brachos. E even if you'd learned the whole Masechus brachos, you, for all you know, there could be a very important Gemara in the middle of Vah Basra that talks about Hilchas brachos that you've never seen, because how are you supposed to know it's there? What the Rambam did was the Rambam organized all of those halachas in the Gemara, in the Mishnah, in the Gaonim and Roshonim, kind of up to his day, organized them topically. Namely, if we look at our Masechta, Masechta the Brachos talks about Tfilah, talks about Brachos. He has separate sections. He has Hilchos Tfilah, Hilchos Kriyashma, Hilchos Brachos. Within, let's say, Hilchos Brachos, he splits it up. So each parak is about a different topic. So there's one parak about Birchas Hanen in the Brachas, like on food and smell, etc. One parak about Birchas HaMitzvahs, and, and each parak kind of is, is a clearly defined topic, and it brings everything together, un, kind of organized in a conceptual way, rather than the Gemara, which kind of flows on and kind of will take you into different topics. The Rambam brings whole topics together, just by the way, to talk briefly about similar to what's been done today. Today, you have lots and lots of halachas for him that I like that. They will give you, let's say, you'll have, I don't know, Hilchas Shabbos, Shmira Shabbos, Kel Chosa or other other sfarim, that what they'll do, they'll start by giving an overview of everything to do with Shabbos, everything on a topic, a little bit similar to the Rambam, um, everything on a topic, and and kind of give you that introduction before going on to the Halachos. Um, again, we'll come back to that point about in the modern day, uh, other things like Encyclopedia Talmud, etc. We'll come back to that later on in our learning. However, this concludes our first section, which is kind of learning the, the broad outline of what is going on in the Gemara and the Rishonim. So you have the Gemara, the different things it does to a Mishnah, the different questions it asks within a Mishnah, backwards, forwards, sideways, etc. Then we talk about different Rishonim, Rashi explaining, Tosas bringing contradictions, the Rif bringing Halacha, Rambam kind of organizing everything in kind of a conceptual order and bringing all the Halachas from all over the Gemara together. This is kind of in the abstract, we talk about what goes on and kind of in, in theoretical terms, how Gemara B'Ian works. What we're now going to get to, the second part, is maybe a little bit more difficult, and we kind of really kind of the, 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 get really stuck into it, which is um, to learn how actually to, to do this ourselves. I mean, it's alright to say, well, this is what the Gemara does, this is what Rashi does. How do I learn Gemara myself? How do I learn Rashi myself? How do I learn Tursus myself? So what we did already from Monday, and we're going to continue that on, for a few share is kind of get, trying to work on a, um, a methodology um, for learning Gomorrah by ourselves. It's, often people will say, oh, just practice, just do it and do it, and then eventually you'll get good, which is true. However, if you have a kind of a methodology, if you have in your head kind of a clear thing, it's not just, okay, here's a Gomorrah, I'm just gonna have to someone work this out. But if you can know, okay, I know what to do when I first sit down in the Gomorrah, I do this, then I do this, and I do this, and kind of you know a methodology, how to work through it, that's both more enjoyable and more effective in terms of developing the skills. So we started that a little bit on, on Monday. Monday was just talking about the, 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 the most important thing kind of, when, kind of when starting learning Gomorrah is to recognize that it's a whole new language, and kind of talking about how Aramaic works. He talked in, in that shit, talked a little bit about how it's similar to Hebrew, how many um, nouns in Aramaic, like Lachmo is similar to Lechem, Anya is similar to Ani, etc. They're very similar, as well as verbs. Achalu is similar to Achal, just it, the, the conjugations work differently. What we're going to do now this week, this year, is develop kind of, again, our, our ability to um, our ability to understand Aramaic, this time focusing on how to understand whole sentences. And what we're going to do from this week, from, from, from tonight, and from every year onwards is 
rather than just talking in abstract, each time what we're going to do is we're going to learn, let's say, a new skill, a new part of our methodology, and then apply it every time, kind of continually adding. Namely, tonight we'll learn, let's say, a second part of understanding Aramaic, how to understand Aramaic sentences. At the end of the shir, what we'll do is that there's a kind of a part of the last part of the sheet, is to work through something, a, a piece of Kumori yourself, going through the methodology as you've talked it through. So going through what we'll do tonight, going through how to... How to um, break up the sentences, then going through the verbs and the nouns, trying to work out how they translate, etc. And every time, every week, we're going to add kind of another stage, another level, um, another uh, kind of another trick or another another kind of technique for how to understand the Gemara, hopefully, again, continually developing um, our ability. So, again, it's, the idea is to learn how to read the Gemara independently, but not just, oh, just try it and just keep practicing and you'll get better, but to hopefully have some kind of methodology that you can work through that you'll be able to... Um, in a more effective and more enjoyable way, uh, develop the skills to read Kumara by yourself. I'm going to email each of you individually tonight. Just, uh, to, 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 I've got email addresses now just to say hello. Um, and again, love to love to kind of be able to hear your feedback and just get to know a little bit of email. So I'll send you all the emails um, this evening. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the learning and hopefully be in touch.